I'm not really sure what happened there. Was the video kind of going crazy for you guys too, or was it normal? <laughs> that was a little funky. It was, yeah, it was a little funky. I think you're a little uh -oh. bit um, you're 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 muted, Deshaun. I don't think he can hear us. Oh, he go. jumped off. All right. Anyway, well, at least Deshaun, he he knows he knows the uh, routine, situation huh? how to do it. All right. Well, Deshaun Parker will be joining us in a minute. <laughs> Meantime, I'm your host, HRT Rich, joined of course by the consummate pro co-host of all co-hosts, Swiss Army Sean. Sean, how are you tonight? I'm okay. Ready to ready to be back Monday. It's mm, not gosh. Wednesday. I don't need to get the tissues out. We have a no no good, tissues. Right now. It's it's time to celebrate. And Deshaun will be joining us in a moment. And here he is back. Right, I'm back. I, think, uh, I don't know what happened there. Maybe it's my computer. The host. The new host, when it's not Julie or Jamie, just blows everything up. So forgive me. Okay. All right, Deshaun, you're back with us again. We appreciate that. So um, a little bit before the show, we were talking about your injury and how you're recovering. Not so much about the injury recovering, but you had a big smile on your face. And I said, man, you look happy. And you said to us, it's because you're going to walk again soon. And I, we were talking about how you take those little things for granted until you can't do it anymore. So tell us a little bit about your recovery and how much you're looking forward to walking again. Well, they've, I've actually got lucky. I mean, I went to the doctor last week and, I was, well, put it this way, from the start, I wasn't going to be able to walk, period, for at least six weeks. So I, when he did the surgery and everything, he came out after he came out, like I came out of surgery and everything, he told me he had it to where I could at least walk on, you know, put weight on my left leg, but nothing on my right leg until I went to see him. So I went to go see him a couple weeks, or last week, I went to go see him last Friday. And he told me within like two weeks, I can start putting weight on my right leg. So he said, once you do that, you can just go ahead and start walking from there. So I'm looking at Friday as the time he really told me I can probably really start doing it. But I'm looking at Wednesday because I've already been kind of, you know, doing it with crutches, but not putting full weight on my you know, right leg yet. But kind of just doing it a little bit, you know, as I can and I'm feeling pretty good. So. I'm looking at Wednesday or Thursday. Hopefully, I'll be off the crutches and walking. So, I mean, that's a plus. You know, that's a main thing, and it's a plus because I'm bored to death sitting here. So, hmm. you think doctors know we all cheat a little bit? So, you know, kind of like the, the friend that knows you're going to be late. So, if he knows you're going to be late, he tells you be there at seven because he knows you're going to show up at eight. So, you feel like the doctors know you're going to get up out of the chair and kind of say, okay, Friday, because they know you're going to get up Wednesday. Oh, for sure. When I walked in the doctor's office, well, when he walked in the doctor's office, he said, hey, you've been walking yet? And I said, man, if you'd have told me I could walk, I'd have started walking a long time ago. So he started laughing and everything. And even when he told me that I was going to, you know, I could start in two weeks, I think he kind of figured, you know, I was going to try to do it before that. So he kind of knew what was going to happen. Hmm, yeah, I can imagine. I get stir crazy like that, too. And I'm not even confined to a wheelchair. Now, I'm 57. And I used to be when I was younger. I know I don't look older than 25. Thanks, everybody. But uh, when, when I was younger, like I get these little injuries, they'd be gone in a week or two. Right. Now I'm 57. I'm on the other side of the 50 yard line. All of these little like lagging injuries, they just linger and linger and linger. Are you finding now that you're on the other side of the 50 yard line? I mean, do you find that yourself recovering as fast or you think you're going to have to work a little bit harder than before? Believe it or not, I feel like I'm just like uh, everything's the same. I mean, because like a lot of injuries that I've had, I kind of recover pretty fast and I feel like I'm doing the same thing now. So, I mean, I really don't think the age or anything is really holding me back from recovery because like I said, I'm, I'm just like, I honestly feel like I can walk today right now if I had to. I mean, I really could, you know, I mean, I'm not going to say it, it would be a little pain or anything like that, but it's a pain that I can take and everything like that. So, I mean, I really feel like I'm healing the same, if you want to know the truth. Hmm. Someone who's always the same and in, well, good spirits <laughs> and healthy is our good friend, Swiss Army Sean. Sean, how are you? I don't, I don't know about that, you know. <laughs> well, you know, I have One to thing... put all the compliments on you. Otherwise, I'll feel like I'm not doing as well as Jamie does with you. <laughs> One thing I'll say is, you know, and, and it's the jockey thing when the, Sean said it is they go stir crazy when they get a couple days just to lay around. And I'm like, hey, just leave me lay around. I'd be fine with it. So <laughs> what are what are you doing that you can do to keep yourself occupied? Well, I actually went, uh, I want to say swimming, but not really swimming. I was floating in the pool today. So, I mean, I kind of did that today. But I mean, I went fishing uh, a couple days ago just to get out. But I mean, it was, I mean, it wasn't too bad. It was a little... I had to, you know, putting the boat on and off the trailer was a little bit of a kind of a fight, but I mean, I got it done. But right now, it's just that was the only thing I really done. I mean, I've gone to the grocery store a couple times, but other than that, it was just laying around and 
watching TV, and that's about it. The last time we had you on, you talked about fishing too. Did you have any uh, good fishing stories in between last time we talked and now? No, uh, we I, actually in Louisiana, we had some great fishing stories over there. I mean, we caught a bunch of fish and sheep heads, actually some huge sheep heads. But I mean, uh, when I went out the other day, I caught a bunch of little babies fish. I mean, but it was still fun just catching something, just to have a little, just a little tug on the, you know, the rod to bring something in. It was, you know, just fun. Just for me to do something, it was, just, you know, it just felt good. Yeah, absolutely. And we talked about before, and we highlighted the other day about the Jockeys Guild and all they've done. You're a member of that, correct? Yes, I'm a member for sure. Yeah. So you want to explain to the younger riders, because we've had younger riders on that aren't part of that, and we're kind of like, you know, we see you in the situation, we see Andre in the situation, and kind of tell them about it. Yeah, I, I'm always for telling the young riders to get in the guild. I mean, it you really don't think about it, but when you're hurt, it really helps you out. I mean, it's not much money, but it's definitely something that you, you, you're going to need. And you know, I think it's it's like five bucks amount. I mean, it comes right out of your check, so you really don't miss it. I mean, you know, because you're not, it's not something that you're really, you know, writing a check out to the guild. So you're really not missing it. And I've had a lot of riders that tell me that they don't like the, they're not happy with the guild and things like that. But I've always told them, here's what I've always said. If, if you're going to take $5 amount yourself and put it away for when you get hurt or when something happens, then okay, I say definitely don't get in the guild. And if you're gonna be that strict and do it, then you're okay, I go for it. But if you're not, get in the guild because not only you know is it will it help you while you're hurt, but say like a lot of things are going down now to where you know you need um you need like Mindy to come in and help you, you know, they'll help you with the lawyers and stuff like that. And then you know, if you get in trouble or in a race or something like that, and you say you don't think that you did it, and you know, you have the the guild guys come in and, you know, work with you and talk to the stewards and try to get you out of the situation. But I will always tell everybody that the guild is something that you do need as a rider just for, because when you do get hurt, you definitely need that little money coming in. Unless you're going to do, like I said, unless you're going to be strict about it and take that five bucks and put it away every month, then hey, more power to you. I, I couldn't do it and never, never would. So that's why I've always stayed in the guild. But I've been to Guild for my whole career, pretty much. So I mean, you know, it's just one of those things that I will support all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of people are getting upset with them lately because of things that are going on with the hissa and everything. But I mean, they're still trying to help us out, and they're still for us. So I mean, it's nothing that I would ever say, you know, don't get into it because of this and that and that. They're definitely trying to help us. So it doesn't seem like it, you know, as you know, why you're really into it right now, but they're definitely out there trying to, you know, get everything taken care of for us and everything. So mm. that's funny. You said, ahead, oh, sorry, Rich. No, so I was just that's funny a couple of comments, but go ahead. We'll do it when you're done. Right. No, I just wanted to elaborate on that. It's funny you say about saving the $5 because I'm the same way with the 401k at full-time jobs. I hate when people take money out of them and I'm like, I could do that myself. And, and so I don't, don't. And, then, and, and then somebody goes, but are you doing it? And I'm like, no, I'm not doing no, it. Exactly. <laughs> and I could. <laughs> yeah, you never do it. I mean, and like I said, it's, it's not much money, but it's definitely going to pay your bills. So, I mean, it's definitely something that you, at, at one year, I mean, when I was going for leading rider the nation, stuff like that, I probably paid more into the guild than anybody out there because I was riding over 1,500 horses a day or a year. I mean, I was paying, I mean, I for sure, I was out there paying more than Mike Smith and them. They're riding, you know, two, three a day and stuff like that. And I'm riding nine, ten a day. So I mean, I've I've really had to go through paying out a lot. So I mean, but a lot of times if you're not riding that many and you know you're you know you're just riding a few and the five dollars you're really not gonna miss. And I know it's hard when you when you think about your you know your what you have to pay for you know your. Um, electric and stuff like that for the weeks and stuff like that but you're really not going to miss it when it's coming out that instead of having to you know pay it to somebody but whenever you're just having it taken out it's easier so i mean i would definitely say for all the young riders get in the guild i mean it's right it's definitely worth it you know mm -hmm. just for their insurance for when you're hurt and if something happens to you they have a you know the life insurance and things like that for you so i mean it's definitely worth it I would think horse racing is a lot like motorcycle riders. I, I know a lot of people who own motorcycles and they all told me that at some point in time, you better be prepared to put it down because every motorcyclist at some point goes down. So I'd imagine in the horse racing community, 
every jockey at some point is going to go down. It's just a matter of what happens when you go down. No, that's what we say. It's not about if you're going to go down. It's when you're going to go down. It's going to happen in some time in your career. You know, knock on wood, it doesn't happen a lot. But, I mean, it's definitely going to happen. I mean, it's just avoidable. Even in the mornings, you know, getting on horses and stuff like that, you, you're you still taking a chance and everything. So, I mean, a, you know, you can be walking in the barn area and get kicked by a horse, you know, or something like that. So, I mean, it's a lot of different things that out there. But you are, if you're going to ride, I mean, if you're going to ride almost every day and two, three, four, five a day, you're going to go down. I mean, it's just going to happen. I mean, whether or not you get hurt or not, that's a different story. But, I mean, you're definitely going to go down. I mean, it's just part of the game. It's, a, you know, the part that we don't like and we don't want to, you know, it's, but it's really nothing you can say. You're never going to go down because if you say that, you know, you're definitely going to go down. But, I mean, we are going to go down every once in a while. So. Mm. If you do that, you're going to make sure you go down the next mount. It's like when I say a horse has no chance to win, you can circle it and put it in the winner's circle. <laughs> yeah, so, you're right. so Grandma Horse Racing says she learned about the guild here, and uh, she says that uh, you're also um, – can you can racing fans donate to the guild is a question from Terry, or is that just five bucks out of every jockey? Is there a way for people who aren't in the industry to help out that you um, know of? I, I'm pretty sure you can. I'm not, I'm not sure how, but I'm, I know for sure you can, but yes. But, I mean, it's definitely uh, worth, you know, the guild definitely needs to help because they're paying out a lot of to a lot of different, you know, people that are hurt and everything like that. Just like me, Andre, uh, you know, I mean, Jose got lucky. You know, he got a couple of fractured ribs or something like that, a bruised rib. So he really got lucky, but he could have been one of us, too, sitting on the sideline, you know, collecting from the guild. So, I mean, it's definitely a good thing to be into mm -hmm. or get into or send some money to. Grandma Horse Racing says wants you to get back in so she can win some money. <laughs> for sure about that. And then Laverne Bishop says, don't rush yourself back. The prayers continue. I've heard that a lot. Everybody keeps telling me, don't rush, don't rush. I mean, I'm pretty not, I'm really not rushing to get back to riding, I say, because I still got another well, three weeks, I think, before I even go see the doctor again. But I'm just, I am kind of rushing to walk just because I want to get out and do it's so nice out. And sitting in the house and just looking outside, looking at the sun, it just drives me crazy. But I will say I'm rushing a little bit to walk for sure, but I'm not really rushing to get back to riding as, say, before. Trust me, I'd, I'd go to the doctor and tell him, hey, I, I, give me two more weeks. I'm done. I'm going to go back to riding. And I haven't said that yet. So mm. I'm proud of myself about that. So I'm taking my time with that. So so the heart hasn't grown fonder a little time away? No. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Actually, when I start watching the races, I start thinking, man, I, you know, I can do this right now. So, I mean, it, I kind of have to not watch the races sometimes just so I don't think about it. But, yeah, once I watch the races, I kind of – you get that feeling that you want to get back in the saddle. So, hmm. I can imagine, too, you're sitting in – I mean, like you mentioned, it's nice out. You finally got some time off with as many mounts as you get, and you can't do nothing. Can't that do would anything. drive me bananas. Yes, you're right about that. You you want time? I mean, when you're riding a bunch and you're working a lot and you're riding different tracks and traveling up and down the road, you want that time. And as soon as you get that time, well, you don't really want that time while you hurt. But when you do get that time when you hurt, it's like, man, when you get there, you're like, I'm going crazy just sitting here doing absolutely nothing. I'm, I mean, I'm really driving my wife crazy if you want know the truth. You know, she, <laughs> she's sitting up here doing a lot of things for me, and I'm I'm just like, I got to get out of here. And you know, I know I can't sometimes, but I do have to get out though. I'm sure a lot of jockeys, right. wives, and husbands have that same sentiment, right, Sean? I mean, we we it's yeah. all too home here for us. Well, that's what I was gonna say. You're saying you got to get out of there. Has she sent those words yet to you that hey, you got to go to the doctor and get cleared and get out of here? <laughs> Not yet. I don't yeah. think so. But I mean, she's probably thinking it for sure. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. A couple more comments real here, quick, Sean. And, and this is something I think is going to be prevailing, and, and it's going to lead me to another question here, real quickly. But uh, Jerry Barber says, "Looking good." And here's where we um. And, and this is probably something you're very familiar with. Sean Nolan says, the Sean is such a class act, fabulous rider. Miss you on the track, my friend. Keep getting stronger day by day. Um, Grandma horse racing, guys always smiling, love his attitude. And, of course, Breeders' Cup winner, big part of the horse racing today, family. Willie Martinez, my oh, boy, you are. Chili Willie. My prayers, let's go champ. Class act, top and bottom, one of the best. Which brings me to a question. I mean, obviously Man, I definitely want to sh give a shout out to Willie. He's out there winning races, and I'm still looking good, too. I mean, keep it up, Will. You should see. I went to Florida with Willie and Jamie. I was down at Gulfstream Park, right? So we're walking around, and I'm telling you, 
Willie is the boss, man. He just needs the ring on the finger. And every <laughs> young jockey will come up and kiss it, man. He is the Don, no question about it, man. Oh, yeah. Chili Willie, that's what that's his name. Indeed. But uh, I was saying one of the things I'd imagine, because you are well-respected, highly thought of, award-winning for being uh, an, an honorable person as well as a great jockey, I had to imagine how did all the outpouring of support – I mean, you know the fans are out there, but when – you know, there's an old saying, when stuff hits the fan, you find out who your friends are. You know who your friends are now. How did how did all that make you feel? Oh, man, I was, I mean, that was a pleasure. I mean, I've gotten, I mean, a lot of people I haven't talked to in years have gotten in touch with me lately. And, I mean, it just felt good talking to them. And because, you know, normally when I'm riding and stuff like that, I don't really don't have time to keep up in touch with anybody. But I probably got over a thousand text messages right now. I mean, and still coming. I mean, and you know, just everybody checking Sean. He checked on me and, you know, he said, hey, you know, I'm here for you. And I'm everybody saying the same thing. You know, if, if I need anything, give him a call. You just want to talk, give him a call. And I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody getting in touch with me because, I mean, it just really showed the love and just made me feel good to pick my head up a little bit too. You know, everybody's saying, and everybody saying the same thing, take your time, which I plan on trying to do. But, I mean, it's hard to do. But, I mean, just the love that they're showing me i mean it really makes you feel good though like i said sean he, he got in touch with me and said hey if you're bored come on the show and i was like heck yeah i'll be on the show <laughs> <laughs> yeah he said he was bored i was like hey i know what to do for at least an hour of your time you know a half hour yeah. an hour of your time <laughs> well somebody who's never boring is our great co-host sean no, <laughs> no, <I'm, that's, laughs> Well, I was going to ask two questions, and one, you kind of elaborate, but how do you find that balance on, I know you want to watch horse racing, but at the same time, like you said, it's hard. So how do you find that balance, and what do you do about that? It's hard. I mean, no matter what, I'm going to watch it. and I mean, it's just part of me and what I've done for so long, and it's just what I love, so I'm going to watch it. And like I said, the more I watch it, the more I want to do it again and want to ride. So it's it's kind of hard, but I mean... I know I got to take my time and just get fit and get ready and heal up and everything like that. So, I mean, like I said, I get a lot of calls from everybody telling me just, you know, just enjoy it right now. Take your time, heal up and get better and come back stronger. So that's my plan. And the other thing I always wonder is when a jockey watches a race, an active jockey, because we see them on TV when they're retired, but you're an active jockey, you're watching it. How are you watching the race different than Rich and I as gamblers are watching the race? Uh, just kind of seeing where people are sitting and knowing what they kind of look like, you know, well, from what I think they have horse underneath them and stuff like that, and, you know, that they're definitely sitting in a good spot. And truthfully, I've been watching Irad lately, man, he's on a terror, you know, it's just, he's something special right now. And I mean, it's just, he's, he's in that zone to where he can't do any wrong. I mean, whatever he does, it's just, he's hitting every time, you know, wherever he, he puts his horse, it's the winning move or, you know, so I mean, but watching the races, sometimes you'll watch somebody and you're like, man, don't sit there, don't sit there. And then you say, get out of there. You know what I mean? You're like, you know, you know they're going to get in trouble or something like that. So you watching the races that, that way, kind of as a rider and stuff like that. But, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, you bring up our, if you bring up Irad, he's a hot topic lately. I, You know, I've been – he's winning four or five a day. But then also even some people are blaming him for taking out Jose. Like, what do you <laughs> think of that style – not necessarily high rad, but that style with the herding and everything else that seems to I, I think we all do it. I mean, there's nothing that, that he's doing that we wouldn't that I wouldn't do or somebody else wouldn't do because there's sometimes your horse gets out there and he gets, you know, by himself and stuff like that and he feels another horse coming, he'll take back off. So I mean you kinda always kinda pull your horse down to another horse. I don't think he's doing it to hurt anybody or anything like that. And I get upset when people talk like that. Because, you know, like the other day, I think the, the day that uh, Jose went down, the last race they had an inquiry and they are all complaining that um, Irad's, you know, riding bad and come over. He never come over a, a lick. That horse on the inside just did not like being inside. And once he came over a little bit, Irad came over a little bit. That horse just was so scared and jumped out of there. But I didn't think he come over enough to where, they, that you know, he bothered anybody or he's trying to be dangerous or anything like that, which he's not trying to be dangerous. He's trying to win. And like it looked like his horse got to the lead and was kind of waiting on the horse. So when he pushed, you know, kind of pulled his horse down to that other horse a little bit, his horse took back off. So, I mean, it's just we all do it. I mean, if you don't, then you're not trying to win. Hmm. That's another discu discussion there, too. All the different tracks in the different states with all the different laws. I can see the same race at Santa Anita 
or Del Mar and then see it at Saratoga and we got two different rollings. What well, do you guys see, think? Of, did, did you see that race last, yesterday at uh, Del Mar? Del Mar? Yeah. yeah. I thought that was a bad call. Yeah, it was 50-50 and they disqualified. Yeah. The four and and, and not, both- only, not only that, the horse that they put up got in front, back in front of the four horse. So what, what did he take away from them? Hmm. Well, and, and that's what I'm saying. And so Del Mar makes that disqualification. We'll look at another track. They could have had that same thing. They wouldn't even have looked at it. Then you got that third track that would have looked at it but not made the change. Right. Kind of like you got parks and it would have went official right away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like the whole Heisa thing. And Rich said this a long time ago when that was first talked about. Horse racing should have got together and everything should have just been copied from the successful tracks. When do we get on board where the rules are the same on the objections and the reviews and all that? I think that's going to be hard just because you have, you know, three people with all kind of different, you know, visions on or watching the race or something like that. So you can't, not unless you have one board of stewards that's watching every race at, at every track or something like that, then it's going to, it can be the same. But you can't have three official or three stewards at every racetrack and all going to come up with the same thing because it's not going to ever happen. Well, let me well, ask you that. Let me why couldn't you do? Why, why couldn't you do that? Hold on like, a second, Sean. As a jockey, I mean, you've run in as many races as anybody. So I mean, you've got a lot of experience in this. So I would totally put a lot of weight behind what you have to say here. As a jockey, what do you want the standard to be for a horse to, or somebody to get DQ'd on an objection? I'm, I, to be honest, I mean, it's not really a kind of a standard. But if you're gonna if you're gonna fault someone for doing something keep it going don't say okay this one was so so and that was wasn't as bad but just if you're gonna do it you know say this is what we're gonna do all the time so i mean i'm like i said del mar maybe that little bump or whatever that they have they always take them down for that i mean if that's the case then i guess they did a good it was a good call for them but don't have it you know bump a little bit in that race and they take them down and then the next very next race they have another little bump and they, they don't even have an inquiry or anything up like that for up for it. So, I mean, if you're going to do it, just be consistent with it and do it the whole time. Don't, don't say, well, this one was worse than that one because a lot of times, and like I said, the, that horse yesterday, I don't see where he took away from that horse because the horse got back in front of the four, the four just got him at the wire. So, I mean, he, the one was in front of it, so he couldn't have taken anything away from him. He was, he was got in front of him. So, I mean, what did he take away from him? To say he should come down. Hmm. Exactly. Neither horse, neither horse stopped, and neither jockey stopped riding. So no, I and then then the one come out just as much as the four come in. Yes, yes, yeah. But what you said though about the three people and they couldn't do every track. Why couldn't we do like what the NFL does and have maybe one or two stewards on track and then have them call into somewhere where they're reviewing the tape? I mean, all they're doing is watching the replays anyway, so you really don't need to be on site. Right. Yeah, and, that's true. You I know, never thought about that. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Yeah. And then you yeah. would definitely have not only more fairness, but kind of like an umpire and umpires in baseball, and they're all different too. But you start getting a standard where you know what yeah. you can do and what you can't do. Yeah. I think the only thing it'll do is just kind of slow the races down just because you're called, like you say, you call in New York and getting the, the <laughs> official, you know, sign or something like that. Or, mm-hmm. you know, the stewards have to go to the, the booth and look at the and talk to the guys and whoever you know wherever they're sitting at and you know go from there but i mean you're right about that it could be something like that but that way um you you it will be more tracks you know kind of having the same way instead of you know like you said like this track will look at it this track could take it down this track wouldn't even have an inquiry or an objection or anything like that so mm, yeah i think you got it right because no matter what athletes you hear when they talk about the officiating of their sport, they don't care how it's officiated. Just as long as that, if the tug on the shirt is a foul on one baseline then it's a foul on the other baseline. Exactly. That's the truth right there. And I can appreciate that. At least you know what you're working with, right? Then you can work around it for sure. Oh, for sure. Do you follow boxing at all, Deshaun? Uh, Just a little bit. I haven't lately, but I mean, I used to for sure. Mm. I was asking because there's a real big fight this weekend between Crawford and uh, Errol Spence, two undefeated guys like a throwback to the 80s. Just wanted to get a sense if you had a play in there, but it's probably Mm -hmm. not something you're following. Some you might want to watch Friday on Saturday night. It's going to be a huge, huge. (laughs) There we go. I can do that for sure. Maybe Sean and I can get on the undercard. What do you think, Sean? (laughs) (laughs) What, were you and I fighting? No, we don't want to fight. (laughs) <laughs> we can fill those boxes. And we can get in those big balls that you see like at a soccer tournament when you run into each other. But anyway, a little bit of a tangent there. Go ahead, Sean. I'm sorry. <laughs> no. Um, so how has 
how how much more have you been on social media because of sitting there and how is that treating you because um, <laughs> go ahead i've been on it a lot and i mean i'm seeing a lot of people complain i'm like good lord this is crazy and i'm like oh yeah there's been times i want to answer and i'm like i'm not i'm not gonna do it because i'm not a social media guy but i want to answer so bad and say look it's not that's not how it goes it's not the way it was or something like that but i leave it alone just because it's not something that I'm going to keep up with anyway. I mean, but I have been on social media a lot. So, yeah. And what's crazy is right before you got hurt, somebody that must have been in an ownership group with one of your horses was complete. And I had to come to your defense. You know, there's certain people I take it personal now. And I had to come to your defense, but I did it from my account, not Horse Racing Today's. But uh, how ridiculous is that? And not just on your case, on any case, that an owner would publicly criticize a jockey on social media instead of just having a conversation with someone. Oh, it happens all the time all the time that's why i tell a lot of young riders stay off of social media that's you know a lot of times they say we rode a bad racer or something like that and you know you went out there doing everything you can do and yes we're going to make mistakes so i mean don't ever say we're perfect or anything like that and we're definitely going to make mistakes because you only have that split second to d decide to go in or out or you know whatever you do but i mean you're you thinking you're making the right move at that time so i mean there's nothing else you can do about it. Once you made that move, it's 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 a done deal. You've already done it. So, I mean, there's nothing you can take back. And you got to stick with it sometimes. And then a lot of the guys come back and they'll get on social media and they were like, oh, that's the worst ride ever. I tell you, there was one guy used to get on Marcelino every time. I mean, he was, um, I mean, he's on, you know, the favors a lot. And they're not going to always win all the time. But they'll come back and say, you're the worst rider I've ever seen in my life and stuff like that. And here he's a leading rider. So how bad can he really be? <laughs> well, you know, it's starting to be too. When I put on about jockeys winning three or four races, it's almost like the ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend. I'll always have that one or two people that will be like, yeah, but he gave a horrible ride in 1987 in race five <laughs> on this yeah. horse. It's like they never forget. And that's how, <laughs> and believe it or not, owners are that way. They say that the owners and trainers. I mean, I've rode for a bunch of trainers and I'm like, man, I, you know, I used to ride everything for you. Now they won't give me a shot. I'm like, what happened? Oh, you remember that horse and, you know, three years ago that you rode and you did that. It was just, I just, you know, we just don't have any luck. I, I win 500 races for you. Now you're going to tell me we don't have luck, you know, because of one race. I mean, it's just how it goes. But you got to learn just to walk away and just keep smiling. And hopefully one day they'll come around and give you a shot again. It, it, it's hard, though. I will say that. I mean, sometimes you'll come back and be like, you want to say something really mean and nasty to that person just because, you know, you feel that you need to, but it, you don't ever want to burn any bridges in this business. So, you know, you, you know, keep your mouth shut and just walk away and smile. And like I said, hopefully they'll give you a shot one day. Mm -hmm. again. Right. I've said if you burn too many bridges, you're going to find yourself on an island by yourself, right? Um, you don't want to ever be there. No. Especially and, in this business, where, in your business, where everything is – basically old fashioned, you know, handshake business, right? Oh, for sure. And like you said, I mean, as soon as you get one guy upset with you and, you know, you, you're not, I mean, like when you're doing good, you don't think about it, but whenever you go in that little slump and everything, you need that guy to get you out of and you say, man, I can't even go ask him for that mile because I kind of, you know, cussed him out the other day or two months ago or whatever, three months ago, or I know he's not going to give me a shot again, you know? So, mm -hmm. so I've always just tried to just walk away and, I mean, you know, come home and scream and shout and say some things. But other than that, I, you know, try not to say anything to a trainer or owner or anything like that. Just to, just so I might need them another day and hopefully they'll give me a shot. Mm -hmm. For sure. I can understand that. Right, Sean? Yeah, absolutely. And that that's the part, too. Like, you guys, you listen to these guys, the owners, the trainers and stuff about uh, what you're doing. You know, they'll give you instructions or whatever. And then you're racing and then as soon as the race is over you got to start thinking of what you're going to tell them later when you're coming back yeah most I, people yeah. don't realize that but you're you're telling them hey this is what happened out on the track too yeah i mean there's there's sometimes i come back and i'll say hey i rode that was the worst race i've ever ridden in my life and i mean i tell them the truth you know i thought i did something wrong and then there's sometimes i'll come back i think i did everything right and they tell me hey that was the worst race you ever ridden for me and stuff like that so i mean i'm like you know what did i do that you didn't want me to do or what could i have done different you know i mean I, yes we didn't win the race but you know i try i think i i put the horse in a position to win a race and just didn't have enough horse to you know the worst thing is you don't want to ever tell a trainer or owner you know your horse isn't much so you're always trying to think of something to tell them because you don't want to hurt their feelings and say hey your horse this is not much horse so 
you know, you want to be truthful sometimes. And sometimes you can't say them to certain people, but a lot of times when you say that to them, they get offended too. So, yeah, they own a there, piece of the horse. Yeah. Has there ever been, I'm sure there has been, but how many times does it happen when you get off a horse and you're like, and you tell your agent, I never want to ride that horse again? <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it happens more than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens if nobody ever wants to ride that horse again? Is that when you look in the program and you see it says no rider? Is, is that a hint that maybe that's a horse that nobody wants to ride? Somebody's going to ride. There's going to be one bug boy out there that wants that mount. He's going to ride for sure. So somebody's going to ride that horse. Well, that's, that's an interesting question, too. When I'm sure you've done it, too, where you pick up mounts where you don't know nothing about the horse. And, you know, a jockey gets hurt or whatever, and you're jumping on a horse. How does that all go? Well, a lot of times, if you're, if you're, you, a lot of times when I get on a horse that somebody's, you know, bringing back or something happens like that, it's a lot of, I've ridden for the trainer before. So I know he's got decent horses and I've always ridden to where I know that I'm not worried about his horses or anything like that. So, I mean, that's how I do it. But I mean, a lot of times it's just like everything else. You just look at the form and you go from there and you figure out, you know, where they need to be and, Put, try to put them in that spot but i mean a lot like i said a lot of times whenever somebody brings a horse back or something happens to where they need a rider i'll ride them just because i've, I've rode a lot for the trainer or something like that or even the owner one thing i always wondered about that and that's a better aspect when i see a horse go back to the paddock to get a new rider and then come back to the track i almost always want to cancel the bet because that horse is doing a lot but a lot of times they come back and they win does it really affect the horse that much, or is it the same as the horses that are out there on the track warming up? No, it's the same. I mean, it's just, I mean, and just like everybody, everybody has their own opinion. That horse might have felt bad for that rider, but another rider rides it and, you know, has no problem with it. So, I mean, just, you know, how it goes. I mean, a lot of times, um, a lot of people bring, I mean, I've taken horses back and um, somebody else pick them up and they might win. Or, you know, I've picked up horses that, you know, people have brought back and win. But I mean, like I said, that's another situation to where a lot of times when I pick up a horse like that, it's a, just because I've ridden for the trainer and I know a lot of his horses and they're not crazy or, you know, a lot of times they're pretty sound. So I'll ride them. Speaking of crazy horses, you, you got injured because a horse flipped over on you. Um, so do, do you remember everything that happened there? Because I know sometimes when people have events like that, they don't remember. Do you remember what happened? No, I remember it just like it was plain as day. And it felt like it went in slow motion, too. The horse was good. The whole post parade kind of getting a little wound up, but nothing bad. But it was on the turf. And as soon as the pony guy went to go hand it off to the uh, the gay guy, I don't know if he, uh, when he raised his hand or something, but the horse, like, spooked and went straight up and like flip straight over top on me you know straight backwards and just kind of went and as i'm coming down i'm looking at this horse just coming like like in slow motion like he's coming to land right on top of me so i tried to move to the side just a little bit and he hit me I, it was my hip and his hip and he landed right on top of me and when he landed on me he landed on me and then laid on top of me so i mean you couldn't even see me probably for it did. I mean, it felt like a couple seconds, but it probably wasn't that long. Mm -hmm. And then once he tried to get up, he started kicking and kicking and kicking. And I think he might have kicked me, but I'm not sure. But as soon as he hit me on my hip, I heard something go. And I knew right then oh. and there I broke something. So I just laid there. And I mean, when they when the paramedics came to me, I said, she said, how, how are you? I said, I'm, I broke something in my hip for sure. And she said, uh, OK, you want to do anything? I said, no, just leave me here until you, you get me moved around and situated because I, and pretty much I just stayed that way. And then when they got me on the backboard, I rolled over a little bit. Other than that, that was about the only movement I had until I got to the hospital, but I knew right away that something was wrong. So it sounds like you didn't really hurt that much other than maybe the horse landing on you for that moment. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I, it was one of those deals where I tried to kick away from him as he, you know, went to go f flip over. And it seems like this, the way I went to go jump away from him, he came right at me too. And it was like, I went that way to where he was coming. And like I said, it was a slow motion. I mean, I was, it's like a cartoon, you know, when you see, you're looking up at something falling down on you and nothing you can do but just sit there and just take it. And that's how I felt. Mm, and hope for the best, right? And then yeah. you get to the hospital and then they tell you the diagnosis. And you have how many screws and stuff in you now? I broke uh, both my pelvis bones on each side. And I had um, um, two, I had, I broke, I fractured six bones. My two pelvises up and uh, bottom, and then my uh, tailbone 
I fractured it in two, two places. Mm. Yeah, I broke my tailbone skiing. That was pretty horrible. And to this yeah. day, yeah, it's not right because it, it, it curves the wrong way. Too much information, <laughs> but uh, it does <laughs> curve the wrong way. Yeah. So that brings up something else now from Del Mar too. yesterday. I'm sure you've seen the whole thing with Abel Sadio. Yeah, yeah. That was crazy. Uh, yeah, what do you think about that? Like, that definitely um, got to be addressed. Yeah, that definitely, because you should never pick up anyone like that, especially if he's complaining about his neck or his back or anything like that. I think that's the worst thing that you can do because you, you like, and here, here's another thing that happened to me. Um, when I was in the hospital, um, they rolled me over to check my back and everything. And when they rolled me over, they rolled, they grabbed me right by my hip and rolled me and I'm screaming and I'm like, I'm in pain, you know, I'm like telling them where you have me is what, what's hurting the worst and you keep pulling me over there like oh well we need to check your back and i was like my back has nothing to do with anything i've, I've already taken off my vest and moved, you know sat up to take off my vest and take off everything and you're still worried about my um back and i was i mean i said some words that i mean i kind of screamed at them and cursed at them and everything else and i, I mean i felt bad and like I, after all said and done i told them i'm so sorry but i mean i was in so much pain when they did that and i felt like they could have been breaking something as they were moving me at that situation. So, I mean, like, you know, with him, you know, you don't want to take that chance and moving him at that time, especially if he's complaining about his neck or his back, because, you know, you want to get him, uh, you know, put the neck brace on him and on the backboard and stuff like that before you do anything, not just carry him because there, you, there's no telling what you can do, you know, from carrying him the way they did. So not yeah, to I feel say like that they did anything wrong, you know, did anything to him other than what he already had, you know, wrong with him. But I'm just saying you never should take that chance. I don't think. Yeah. That's a basic one-on-one. You kind of exactly. learn that as a kid um, with all kinds of stuff to, even if you show up at a car accident, like don't remove the person from the car unless it's like a fire because right. be responsible for that. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, I, I, and I didn't even see the start of that race to know that, you know, he went down until they start showing it. I mean, but man, he went down pretty hard. And normally you don't really go down that hard leaving the gate, but that was crazy. So quick question for you. And then I'll be out of questions. The, um, <laughs> so you, you had a very important win, your 6,000th win, the one that you uh, described as the, your, your most favorite race. And I read in another article there. So when you finally get back to racing and you win again, how where is where is that one going to rank? Well, it's going to be pretty special, you know. What I mean, all every time you come back after injury, the you know winning is just definitely that much better, and then and plus it just boosts your confidence more, and you know you just feel like that's what you, you know that's what you're coming back for, and that's what you did. So I mean, it's going to be pretty good though. I can't wait till it happens. Mm. <laughs> I'm already looking at it, you know. I'm riding the races already, so visualizing that that's, they say, yeah. that's as good as that they say i've read psychologically it's really it's as good as the real thing and because your brain can't tell the difference which is why yeah. like we watch a movie we know it's fake but yet we get emotionally involved because your brain doesn't know the difference between real and what's not real which is kind of wild considering that it's our brain and we know <laughs> consciously it's not real but it's still like anyway go ahead sorry sean i was gonna say well, you know, know. that's a lot of information there but it's all true unfortunately <laughs> Well, you know, that 6,000 career win, actually, it, you know, I was one of the first ones on horse racing today and say, so what bug, bugs me about it is when you get your 6,000 career win, everybody waits to the next morning because it's 10 o'clock at night. They'll wait to the next morning. They'll do a little article or whatever. They don't do a tweet or a Facebook and say, congratulations to Sean Parker. Now, if something happened and you did something bad, nobody's waiting to the next morning. They are on social media right away. So I don't understand why this is a thing in horse racing. I guess it's a thing in all media, but really horse racing media, big time. Yeah, I think that's a thing in life. People just want to put you down or beat you up some way, <laughs> no matter what. I mean, jockeys are the easiest to put down and beat up because, like you said, they're they're beating up Irad some bad right now too. Like, I mean, and it's just, I mean, he's aggressive, but I mean, there's nothing dangerous about him. So, I mean, I wish people could call him a dangerous rider and stuff like that because he's really not. He's out there winning races and trying to win just like we all are. Hmm. I think it's kind of a throw. I think my personal opinion on that is kind of a throwback, throw, throwback writer in that we had on Tony Black, 
who had mentioned before, like in the old days, you know, they would come out to discourage the other horse, you know, they, and they would come down to discourage the other horse. They didn't want to, you know, bump or create contact, but he said, if they bump me, I sure as hell, if I remember correctly, I bump them back. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I think it's a little bit more old school racing and maybe you have some younger school people or newer people to the business or eyes watching because of COVID there was really nothing else going on at that time. And maybe they're not as aware of some of the horse racing history about how people rode maybe 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and how he's really not doing anything that's not traditional and it's helping them win, which is probably stopping the trainers and the owners from tweeting about them. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, we, 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 you know, back in the day we called that race riding, you know, mm -hmm. you, you went over for, you made sure you come over to intimidate that horse or even intimidate that jockey. I mean, that's just how it was. I mean, and it wasn't anything mean about it or you weren't trying to be, you know, I'm not going over there to try to drop that guy, but I'm definitely going to make it tight enough to where he's going to think about coming in that hole or something like that. I mean, that's just how we used to ride. I mean, Nowadays, you can't even come over without them saying that you're a mean rider and things like that. I mean, it just, I, it just, like you said, if they rode back or they saw back in the day how they rode, I mean, it was totally different than the way it is now. And there are sometimes the people did get dropped. And a lot of times when you come back, it's like, hey, that was my fault. You, you dropped me and I'm saying sorry to you because you dropped me because of, you told, I mean, you looked at it and I still came in there. You know, normally when you get that look to on the inside and you get that look, you, you better get out of there, you know, because they're coming over. That's their turn signal to let you know they're coming over. And But nowadays you give that look and they're still trying to drive up in there. And it used to, that used to be the time where you got dropped. Mm. Well, so I, I would say, I would, I would wonder then as a jockey, right? So you're experienced, you know that the horse is going to come out. Right. Because if you're coming on the outside and the horse is to the inside, I know the rule is don't let anybody beat you to the inside. Yeah. But if there's nobody coming on the inside and you know the horse is in front of you, you know the horse is going to come out and impede, not necessarily impede, but get into the eyesight of the other horse to intimidate that other horse. Now, that jockey back there, if the roles were reversed, would do the same thing. Now, as you're the one that's coming up, you got to know that horse is going to come out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and a lot of times they're coming out just because, like you say, when a horse kind of gets loose on the lead, sometimes they'll kind of just mess around. But when you get a horse coming to them or get them, you know, next to a horse, they'll take off running again. So, I mean, that's just a lot of the reasons why we do a lot of it, too. You know. Mm -hmm. So as the guy coming up, you do know that that's going to happen. So, I mean, if, since you know it's going to happen, how do you like try to to overcome it or to, you know, to, to prevent that from happening so you can get by that horse. Is there anything that you can do? Or are you just like, Oh no, I know he's going to come out. I just hope my horse has it. Or do you strategically give him one of your six cracks to get him to go by? How does that work? Or pretty much, you know, he's going to, you know, you kind of figure he's going to come out. You just hope that, you know, your horse is going to go by. And then if not, you hope that if he does come out, he comes out enough to where he does bother you to where you claim, can't claim foul. Because I mean, you can only bump so hard. I mean, or get him, you know, do too much so much but i mean if he comes out to where he definitely you know stops your progress and stuff like that then you say hey i'm gonna claim foul because you knew what you did you come out and i mean a lot of times when you do do it you know what you're doing you're coming out to you know to intimidate so if you go if you you know go over a little bit and make that mistake you know it's you know then you claim foul and hopefully the stewards will take them down but a lot of times I've had horses that will do that too. I mean, you know, you feel like you're going to blow by them and then you get up to that horse and he just kind of hangs right there. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things. You, it's the horse pretty much. It's not really you doing anything. If, if the horse is going to go by, he's going to blow by no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you have them horses that are just go right up to him and hang right there and won't go by. Those herd mentality horses. Yeah. Yeah. On this subject too, and I forget who we had on, they said about the cameras now, that before oh, you'd yeah. be able to know where the blind spots were. So when there were the blind spots and there weren't all these cameras, what are the little things you're doing that you can get away with? Like you're a little, being a little bit more physical with the jockeys, like if they're neck to neck, how yeah. would that work? It used to be because like going into the turns and coming out of the turns always used to be a blind spot just because the switching cameras and stuff like that. So you kind of knew where you can kind of push them in, in a little bit or intimidate them or, you know, put them real, real tight without them being able to see it. But nowadays with the drones and everything like that, there's nothing much you can do. They see everything. So it's, it's changed. I mean, horse racing itself, like uh, race riding itself has changed just because you can't do so much like you used to be able to. Like I said before, 
you knew whether or not you can go inside of somebody. There used to be a rule, hey, such and such, you know, don't go inside of him. If you go inside of him, he's going to drop you, and you wouldn't. I mean, he just had that, you know, that name. That's just what he was. I mean, it sounds bad, but that's just how it used to be. I mean, it was just that kind of a day, and you knew not to go in there. And if you went in there, you knew what was going to happen. But nowadays you can't do that, which is good because, you know, we all want to be safe. And plus, there's a lot of cameras and stuff like that and angles to where they see everything. So you can't get away with a lot that you used to. Hmm. Well, I'm out of questions, John. I promised seven questions ago. Questions. So <laughs> at some point, I have to be a man of my word. What about you? So we'll end it with, you said you go back to the doctor in three weeks. So in three yeah. weeks, he either gives you the green light or still gives you the yellow light? Um, I want to say the yellow light because I think he wants me to do physical therapy. But I'm not exactly sure. I've had, I've had a couple of my doctors I could uh, you know talk them out of them say, hey, my job is a physical therapy, you know. So um, I just see what he says and how I feel. And if I feel like I'm you know pretty much where I'm walking and you know really can't do any physical, I don't think physical therapy will really help me. I'll probably try to talk them out of it. But more likely, I'll probably have to do physical therapy. That's what he told me last time. You know, well he wanted me to to walk first and then worry about physical therapy after that he said that you know there's no sense worrying about physical therapy now when you, you're not walking so and then mm. my last question will be uh when you're out like that we always talk about you got to build the relationships back up you got to get them down when does that begin when you get the green light from the doctor are you already working on that kind of like circling um, dates and going i'll be back this day or well a lot of people actually a lot of people that arrive where i've been in touch with i mean they've been in touch with me you know you know, telling me to get better and, you know, can't wait till you get back and stuff like that. So, I mean, I've already got those kind of, you know, those people that I really know I'm going to ride for and things like that. But I mean, it's just like everything else. Whenever you're out there, as soon as you get back and you get in that winter circle, they're going to want you again. You know, just how it is. They always want whoever's winning. I mean, you could be out there, right? I could still be riding right now and not winning a race and people start taking me off horses. You know, just they don't want you if you're not winning. Just how it goes. Hmm. Well, it's Part the ultimate the sport yep, for yeah. winning. Yep, it is unquestionably. Yeah. Is that whether you're the gambler or you're the jockey, the owner, the trainer, it's all about <laughs> it's all about outcomes, not about intentions, not sure. right? This not. is the ultimate outcome business. And it's not it's not about what you did for me, it's what you're doing for me now. You know, they don't care about what they did, what you know, how many races you won from four or five years ago. They want to know what you're winning for them right now, and that's just how it goes. I mean, mm -hmm. I when I, this summer or the first part of Indiana, I went a slump. I didn't win a race for two weeks. I mean, I was going crazy, you know, and I was like, man, I, yeah, three weeks, my wife said, but I, it's three weeks. And I was like, I mean, I'm, I mean, I had a bunch of seconds and they looked like they were going to win, but it was a lot of horses that were coming off of, um, you know, not being fit and coming off of, you know, layups and stuff like that. They were running good. They just weren't getting there. And I was going crazy just knowing that, Hey, this guy's going to fire me just because he's going to start riding this guy. Cause he's winning. When you're not winning, you know, they, they're going to make that change and you know it's going to happen. And luckily they start winning. But I mean, it, it, it's a rough game when you're not winning. It, you start thinking a lot of things and what am I doing wrong? And, you know, you're really not doing anything wrong, but you still say, well, what the heck am I doing wrong? Why can't I win? You know, and like I told, uh, I used to come back in the room. I was like, I can get secretary beat right now. And everybody started laughing. They say the same thing. Yeah, it's just. It's just a horse, you know, you you know, nothing else you can do until you get, you know, a, a live horse and stuff like that. So, mm. I mean, I've, I, people talk me up to, I mean, you know, you get in that little mind, you know, mindset to where you're not winning and it gets to you a little bit. But I mean, just keep your head up because it's going to happen. But it, it, while I was going, it does suck. Yeah, I can't yeah. imagine. You said they don't they don't remember or care those races you won 15 years ago, but they do care and remember that one race you lost 15 years ago. Oh, yeah, you're right about that. <laughs> they won't let you live that one down. <laughs> no, never. Well, we are certainly looking forward to you being back on the track. And I would say based upon the reaction, all the comments and the thumbs up that we love that we got on Facebook, Twitter, looks like everybody else can't wait for you to be back here on Horse Center. So hopefully when you get healthy, you're back on after your first win, when you're back on. Maybe we can have you back on then. What oh, do you say? Perfect. That sounds good. All Hopefully right. it's my first race back and I'll get back on here quick. Well, we hope it's your first yeah. race back and then a bunch of them afterwards, right afterwards. Because wow, a lot of times sure. jockeys come on and for whatever reason, Horse Center brings them good luck. We appreciate you coming again and wish you nothing but success and green light when you get to the doctor oh, uh, to go. get back up on your feet and get going. Well, it's already giving me, I'm on the show, so it's green light and good luck for when the doctor tells me, hey, go back to riding. 
I All can't right. wait. We're looking forward to it. We can't wait to have a great evening, Deshaun. As always, I appreciate our pleasure. It, guys. No, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. All right, Sean. Thanks, guys. All right, Mr. Sean. Sean might be out of practice in his chair, but I'm not out of practice giving you the big head, my friend. <laughs> yeah, you know, you never are. You always get that right. Yes, every once get, in a while, I gotta get something every, right, right? Every once in a while, you throw it, throw it for the team, like they say. You just throw it and make yourself. Yeah, the you big know, head. I, I, I know I you're take, doing that. I on take purpose. one for the team. I take one for the team. There, there you go. So you speaking, go. I mean, obviously, Deshaun, it, you know, had his situation, and the, of course, Julie Jacobs, who's normally in for me, wife to uh, Andre Ramjeet, who had an accident on. I keep saying September. I don't know why it's September, but it, it was July 15th, if I remember correctly. I don't know why. I don't, it's just in my mind, it's like September. Yeah, that, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are cussing you out because already the summer is going that that fast. You're already in September. Yeah, I'm the, <laughs> you know, I, I'm that old person who can't, uh, can't, it doesn't know like what day it is anymore. Like Jay Marco said, the first thing to go is the brain, right? So I, I think Jay pegged me totally. But in any case, I wanted to bring up and I'll put a link to it down in the description below. Andre's GoFundMe page. It'll be in the link in the description. There is plenty of our links over on our social sites, right? So they're about, mm -hmm. about eh, 35, 40% of the way to the goal. 20,000. Again, today on the horse racing show with Terry, I put a challenge out there for everybody. Make a bet tomorrow. If you're going to bet on the horses or the next time you're going to bet on the horses, pick one of them that you make. And commit to, if it wins, that you'll head on over to the GoFundMe page for Andre. Make a contribution to the Horse Racing Today family and help out Julie and Andre with their family as they make their way, navigate their way through his injury and back to the track. Absolutely. All right, Sean, tomorrow night. I know I'll be in again tomorrow, it looks like, um, for the whole week. As uh, Julie, as we mentioned, takes care of her husband. Like, uh, it was funny, right? With uh, I wasn't going to say so, but I did it. But it, it was funny <laughs> because Deshaun said, I win for two weeks. And right away, his and wife she, was like, no, it's three. Right, yeah, she, <laughs> she remembered. Right away. Right? <laughs> she remembered. I'm sure she had an unhappy uh, husband for a little while for three weeks. You know, him coming home being like, man, I'm not winning. Mm -hmm. uh, they yes, talk about indeed. that a lot. So tomorrow night, we a little different. We have uh, owner coming on, Rob Schutzman of uh, Designated Hitters Racing. Uh, a uh, ownership little ownership, ownership group. group that's willing to take on the big boys. And, I mean, they're winning at like 16%. So uh, they'll have a lot to talk about um, with him and what it's like. You know, he said it's an up, up and down battle every day, every hour type deal with being an owner. So yeah, we'll find sure. out more tomorrow. And we'll find out which jockeys he gives a hard time to, and if he would be willing to take call out on, on Twitter. Sure. No, don't. Yeah, I try to avoid all that stuff, Sean, but yeah, because yeah, I don't know. Anyway, um, tomorrow, speaking of which, Terry and I will be back. And oddly enough, we don't get criticized hardly at, at, at all from our horse racing show where we make picks. So I don't know if that's because nobody's watching <laughs> or if because we're doing all right or we just have a group of really nice people watching the horse racing today show and tomorrow of course now i've just opened the flood yeah, yeah right? you, you, it just it just takes one and you've invited at least one in <laughs> yeah if not more than one but tomorrow terry and i will go out and try to refrain from being criticized for our selections at for parks terry will be off then and then on wednesday the big boopa makes his return he'll be joining me for saratoga on wednesday on Thursday, I'm not 100% sure if we're going to do Saratoga again because we've had some requests for Colonial Downs. So maybe we'll do Colonial on Thursday, Sean. What do you think? You want to put that out there on – You want to, why, don't you, why don't you put that I'll out there that. on social media tomorrow and say, do you want Saratoga or Colonial Downs for Thursday? And we'll do yeah. the viewer's choice. There we go. Yeah, because I guess Horseshoe Indianapolis has off this week, correct? Yeah, they're not running this week. Yes. So. Yeah, I actually had a question. Somebody asked me that, and I was like, "Yeah, it looks like they have off all week." So, a little bit of vacation time. Uh, all right, Sean, that wraps it up for you and I tonight on Horse Center. Take us wire to wire. Uh, any final thoughts before you and I get out of here? Well, Deshaun was on. Deshaun also he's been out for a little while and be out longer. He also has a GoFundMe page. Um, I'll put both links up tomorrow on social and stuff. I'll link it with this interview. Um, and then uh, Wednesday as well, we have a younger jockey coming on, Ajari Williams. He actually just got his uh, first career stakes win at Horseshoe Indianapolis a few weeks ago. So we'll okay. find out more about him Wednesday. And then maybe you can always find out what we're up to. So to make sure you follow us on our social sites, I got to add it to the thing down below. But we have threads now as well. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and then um, 
TikTok, of course, and then we have YouTube. YouTube is Horse Racing Radar TV. They say only one out of 10 people actually hit the subscribe button. So do you want to be the one winner or a part of the nine losers? <laughs> the team of the winners is hit the like button. Also hit the bell so when we go live, you're notified. A really easy way to help us out, too, with the algorithms. They pay a lot of attention to the comment section. I want to thank everybody for the comments, as always. They also pay attention to the thumbs up. It helps us with their algorithms. Really easy way to help the show grow. Once we hit certain milestones with Facebook, and Sean's done a tremendous job with Facebook. The post he put up with Mike Smith has gone viral. Thank you, Sean, for that. And then, um, um, But the more we get up there, the more tools the, the folks like Facebook open up to us and YouTube, the more tools they open up. You have a chance then to maybe make a little bit of revenue. And with that revenue, we'll reinvest most of it back into more products and content here on horseracingtoday.net. And of course, maybe buy a pair of shoes. But aside that, <laughs> there we go. And I'll comment on the Jockey Survivor too. Thanks for everybody that played with that. There was, what, I think 29 entries on that. We're down to four. Um, they'll pick up again on Wednesday since Saratoga's Wednesday. Um, but once that ends, we'll try to do another one, and maybe maybe we'll eat. And the next one we'll do, we'll do for uh, Andre's GoFundMe too, and do another one where we have prizes and stuff. We'll just keep doing it for good causes. Yes, indeed. Yeah, because yeah, that, I mean that's we want to give back to the the horse racing community to degree we can, and any degree we can because we don't really we don't make any money at all is through the help from the folks who are part of the horse racing community, and we appreciate that. All right, Sean, no matter what you're doing for the rest of this night, I know you and I are going to talk for a couple of minutes about some of that strategic stuff after the show. But for everybody else, we certainly hope for the rest of the evening you got God's grace and God's favor. And until we get back together again tomorrow, whether it's Terry and I for Parks or with myself and Sean uh, with our guests tomorrow night on Horse Center, we hope that every single thing you do ends up in the winner circle. Indeed. Thanks for joining us again. Looking forward to sharing some more time with you tomorrow. Have a great evening.